our webinar is going to decline as the country opens up? Hell no! The rise in virtual events only showcased how effective and efficient virtual networking and educational opportunities can really be. Today, I'm sharing an interview I had with Ashley Lavasque, Director of Marketing at Demio. And in it, she taught me all about how to create really engaging elements and touch points throughout a webinar that keeps attendees really engaged. What will you learn? Well, let me tell you. You're going to learn how to turn your webinar attendees into participants. They're going to actively engage and communicate during the webinar. How can small marketing departments build a scalable webinar strategy that drives revenue? And last, why webinars aren't going away and how you can make them better. This is an interview that you won't want to miss. But if you enjoy video more than podcasts, that's okay too. The video is available in the show notes page and you can watch it right there. All right, stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Tiny Marketing. I'm Sarah Noah Block and I teach small marketing departments that are tired of feeling overwhelmed and under-resourced how to build and manage effective and efficient marketing strategies that work for them. Get ready, it's time to dig in and get a big impact with your tiny team. Hello, this is Sarah Noel Block, CEO of Tiny Marketing, and this is On Air with Tiny Marketing. Today, we are going to talk all about webinars. Many of you have said that you have webinar fatigue. We all sat through many, many webinars over the past year, and they're still going to be a part of the strategy going forward, foreseeable future. We're still going to be on webinars, whether it be straight virtual events or hybrid events. Webinars will be a part of our marketing lives, but we need to step it up. We need to make them more engaging and interesting. And today I have Ashley Levesque of Demio. She's the marketing director for Demio, one of my favorite webinar platforms. And she's going to teach us how to create more engaging webinars. So stay tuned. We'll be right up with her. Hey, Ashley. Hi. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so thrilled. Thank you for having me. I can't wait. Same here. Can you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Ashley Levesque. I'm the Director of Marketing at Demio, which is an engagement marketing platform uh, designed to make marketers' lives a lot easier than they already are. <laughs> so yeah. we're a browser-based webinar platform. And yeah, it's, we're changing marketers' lives every day. Truly, you are. I have a few clients that use Demio, and I just... I became enamored <laughs> with Demio. Like we were chatting before the show, I think of Demio like the square space of webinars. It's simple to use. It's streamlined and you could do everything that you need to do right in that platform. Yeah, that's exactly the goal. I mean, webinars are super stressful <laughs> for the majority of people. Even if you have a big team, even if you have a ton of content marketers on your team, even if you have five different people touching your webinar campaign, they can still be stressful. And so we're trying to make it as easy as possible and let people feel super confident and capable. We want marketers to be like, yeah, I am a you know revenue generator. I am impacting business and the bottom line. And I can actually point to that through my webinars. That's really the goal. Yes. And webinars are a huge factor in converting audience, you know, people who, who are just leads into actual customers. It's because yeah. people get to know you, they get to build trust that way. And it's a lot easier to want to work with someone when you feel like you know them a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think, you know, COVID is definitely part of the webinar conversation. But if if we actually take COVID out of the webinar conversation, the idea that COVID kind of forced people onto this, you know, this strategy, webinars are one of the only two-way communication channels that marketers have in their toolkit. And we already know that like you were just saying, that two-way communication is what builds trust and relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes the sale. And if you think about the other kind of channels that we have, like blogs or even social media, email, they're just not designed to be engaging. They're not designed to build relationships. And yeah. I think that's where webinars really move the needle for marketers in particular, is being able to really build 
and nurture and engage a relationship that is quicker to to drive the sales. And something that I talk about all the time is that marketing is really education first. It's educating your customers on how to solve their problems and webinars give you a forum to be able to do that in real time where you can actually have that conversation. So you mentioned engaging. It's a way to be able to have an interactive and engaging conversation with prospects, with leads, but how do you make them engaging? A lot of times they're just Zoom calls. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The worst. This is the number one question I get asked all the time, especially in a sea of not only noise where a lot of people are doing webinars, but I do think people aren't doing webinars to their full advantage. They're not taking advantage of the fact that it's a two-way communication platform. You know, Mm -hmm. if you stand up on your webinar and you present it like it's a college lecture, you might as well be doing a blog post. You need yeah. to leverage the fact that it's an engagement channel. So there's two, two kind of ways that I think about this. One is tactical, a tangible. And I have four tips, like immediate things you can do today to drive more engagement. I love this. Okay, good. Me too. So the first one is to use chat more. Uh, when I run webinars, I start webinars by saying, hey, chat is your home base. Mm-hmm. So ask questions throughout the entire session. And then you, my attendees, answer each other's questions. Develop relationships with each other. Support and engage with one another, not just with me. But how many webinars have you been on where you kind of get in there and the host is like, tell me where you're from. And then just never looks at the chat again. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's over. (laughs) It's such a wasted opportunity. So that's my first one. My second one is to actually provide tangible handouts throughout the entire experience. Mm -hmm. So I think what a lot of webinar hosts and presenters do is they sort of keep everything close to the chest. They're they're very presenty, right? Mm -hmm. On their platform, they've got their slides and they've got their presentation. And maybe they give away like a freebie or an offer at the end. But there's so much time. There's such an interim time there where you can actually validate your own points where you can actually provide visual engagement opportunities with your audience by giving them stuff. So I'm a big fan of like tangible, just like this, my four tips. I'm a huge fan of like checklists and how-to guides. And when I'm on a webinar and I'm talking about and educating a point, like if I were doing this, for example, these four bullet points, I would give a checklist, a physical checklist during the webinar that they could download and then keep and have because it not only helps to validate what I'm saying and gives a visual representation of it, it actually helps extend the value of the webinar itself. Mm-hmm. Another so, big go sorry, ahead, yeah. one second question. So technical realm of this in Demio, how do you give that? How do you give that checklist? Awesome question. So in Demio, you can actually set up what we call the room, which is the webinar room where you're hosting Mm -hmm. your event. You can set that up ahead of time. So I can load up all of my PDF checklists, all of my pictures that I want to give away, whatever it is, I can load it all up ahead of time. And then during the webinar, during the live experience, I just fire them off. And I say, Mm -hmm. hey, attendees, incoming, check this out. And I fire it off. And then I can see as the host in real time, who's downloading that. Who's oh, that's that? nice. oh, it's amazing. So then on the back end analytics, I can go back and see who might be ready for the next step based on who was most engaged and um, initiated <laughs> that kind of participation. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. So that's number two. Okay. I have two more. Are you ready for two more? I'm ready for two more. Okay, so the other one is featured actions, which are basically call to actions during the webinar itself. So this is another kind of controversial one, maybe. I know a lot of webinar presenters, they just want to keep their people focused and engaged, and they don't want to move them off, right, off platform. And I think there's a lot of validity to that, for sure. But I also think that especially if you're doing something on education, if you're trying to get your point across, if you're if you're trying to validate what you're saying, providing a blog post that helps to validate that in real time helps to cement these ideas 
inside your audience. And people are different kinds of learners, right? And the same reason that you might want to have slides, that also you might want to have like a video or graphics because people just kind of consume information differently. You want to give them options and make it easy for them to take the next step. If you want them at the end of your webinar to go sign up for a trial, give them your trial link in real time. Don't make them search for it. Don't yeah. send it afterwards in an email. Send it right then when they're most excited and engaged with you. That's like goes beyond. And the same thing in Demio, I can see on the back end who clicked that link. Did yeah. they convert? Yeah. What did they do? Um, is there a way to score based off of like, are you able to connect Demio to your marketing automation software so you can score their actions that they take? Totally. Yeah. We have a ton of native integrations. So natively, we connect to MailChimp, we connect to ActiveCampaign. Through Zapier, we connect to like hundreds more. So we at Demio, we actually use HubSpot. And even though we don't have a native integration with HubSpot, I use Zapier to do all of this for me. Hmm. So I send my attendees and my no-shows into HubSpot. I can score them based on what their average focus time was. So I can see like, not only does it help me identify, okay, you know, I look at my analytics for a 45 minute presentation and I can see that everybody dropped off at 30 minutes. You're like, what did I do wrong there? I'm like, hmm, I was saying something at that point that was like a little off the mark, maybe. <laughs> not only does it help me with that, but I can use it for scoring to help me identify you know, are my webinars actually improving over time? Is my, am I doing a better job? Is my content improving? Am I, am I providing the value my audience needs? And who's most engaged? Like, how can I pick out the people from my audience that are the ones that I should be sending to my SDR team first and saying, Hey, yeah. these are the people, right? Yes, we can do all of that, which is so powerful. And that reporting also made me think about CEUs. If you're doing a CEU on Demio, it requires reporting to see how long they were actually attending that CEU webinar. So you're able to use it for that too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's really powerful to be able to see. I mean, Again, we're trying to make marketers' lives easier. We want to not only give you the results that you need, like that lead scoring and, and helping move them down the funnel, but we also want to make you better. So like mm -hmm. seeing where are they dropping off, helping you identify, okay, 45 minutes might just be too long. How can I work to make 30-minute webinars our new template, our new constant? Because that's what your audience wants. That's what they're telling you. And as marketers, mm -hmm. it's our job to, you know, yeah, task. listen to our customers. <laughs> See what they actually like, provide it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so those were three. My number four is polls. So my secret trick on the way that I use polls in webinars mm -hmm. is not to do like, do you like Star Trek or Star Wars better? Like I get a lot of polls like that in webinars, which which I get it. They're trying to be sort of like, engaging. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they're irrelevant, you know, and if yeah. anything, they're just sort of like, huh. I use polls to actually inform my webinar content. Mm -hmm. So I present something that says, Hey, we have two options here. We can talk about this or we can talk about this. Which one is more impactful for you? My actual audience on my actual webinar in real time, which one do you want to hear more about? And yeah. then the majority wins. And then I just say, great. And I move to that slide and that's what we do. Yes. That yes. being agile when you're creating that content is so important and polls are a great way to do that. Yeah. It is such an opportunity to actually literally provide the content that your audience wants. It, mm -hmm. Literally ask mm -hmm. them and then just do it. It's incredible. So those are my four like tactical tips. Now it's worth mentioning that all of those things can only really help move the needle if you also have a topic that's relevant, mm -hmm. content that's relevant, an audience that is there because the topic and content match what they need, and if you have a host that is engaging. My number one thing is if you want to have an engaging webinar, you need an engaging host. And that's just sort yeah. of like full stop. Now, what that might mean is that organizations need to get 
sort of comfortable with the idea that maybe it's not who they think it should be that's presenting their that webinar. Is such a good point. Like maybe the admin assistant is really engaging and has a background in improv, for example. And maybe the director is you no know, feels uncomfortable public speaking. It doesn't necessarily need to be someone in a leadership role who's providing the information. No, absolutely. And oh my gosh, I think about this all the time when, you know, I get asked a lot about, well, I have subject matter experts. Like, shouldn't they be the ones on the webinar presenting the material? And you have two options here. If your subject matter experts are not confident in front of the camera, are not able to be agile and flexible and are not engaging, then absolutely not. You can train them on that stuff maybe and Mm -hmm. then try that. Or you can train the improv admin assistant to be the subject matter expert for an hour. Either way, you're putting in some time to figure out the best recipe, right? Well, but I do. Sorry. (laughs) The subject matter expert could also be moderating the chats and answering questions there. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And this totally depends also on like, where is your webinar in the funnel? Like, If you're doing a top of funnel webinar, you don't need a subject matter expert. You're just introducing your brand, right? Your people are in the awareness stage. You don't want to be doing product demos on your top of funnel webinar anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's my, my number one thing is like hard stop. If you want an engaging webinar, find someone engaging to run them. That's a big stop. (laughs) Yes, I, I dig that. That makes so much sense. So let's look at webinars as a strategy to grow your revenue. Where would you place webinars in the funnel and how would you convert people who are an audience member into actual sales using a platform like that? Great question. So I think what I love most about webinars is that webinars show up in all parts of the funnel. So a few examples, top of funnel webinars, super common, right? That's what we typically call like thought leadership education. Sometimes those are panels Mm -hmm. or, you know, an industry leader kind of thing. And the goal of those webinars is really usually to introduce your service, product, brand, company to people that fit your ICP. Sort of like a, hey, here we are. The goals of that webinar, now I'm getting into like KPIs and stuff. Love it. Is probably not sales immediately following that webinar, right? I mean, thinking again about like topic and audience and content, if you're just introducing yourself to this market and you're going to close your webinar with a sales offer, you might not see the results that you want to see because Mm -hmm. it's probably not the best offer for where those people are in their experience with you. But if you move them maybe to a middle of funnel webinar later on, or maybe a simple email nurture or whatever you're, you know, your sales process looks like and your marketing funnel looks like. Middle funnel webinars are usually those who are ready to start talking about product features, product demos, sales demonstrations can happen on webinars. Webinars are just another way of saying one to many. So Mm -hmm. this is also a tip and trick for your sales team. If you're trying to lighten the load a little bit, if your sales team are doing back-to-back demos seven days a week, why not throw open like an open house and do the same demo to more than one person. Save them time, still hitting the right people. You can still answer all the questions in real time, but it just helps to kind of organize their schedule a little bit. Yeah. And then bottom of funnel, using webinars to actually do customer onboarding, to actually do product roadmap updates, feature updates. You know, I love customer webinars that are like milestones. Congratulations for being our our customer. Here's a VIP event. Like let's talk about wine and cheese or like whatever. I know people are doing such cool things, but I think the the point is that obviously depending on your funnel and, and your process, webinars can move the needle all over the place. And we have to stop thinking about webinars as exclusively one place or another, and rather think about our webinar strategy as a more holistic funnel strategy 
of how do I move people from here to here? How do I use all of my marketing tools to do that and all of my sales tools and how webinars might come into play there? Because we're seeing our customers do, you know, webinar to webinar to webinar to close. I mean, it's just because again, you no longer have to get on a plane and fly to San Francisco to make the sale, right? So we're in a world now where businesses have actually formally shifted their sales and marketing processes to accommodate virtual. So you can make the sale online. So leverage that, you know, leverage the opportunity to do it. It doesn't have to be one-to-one anymore. Exactly right. With Demio, you also have the option to do on-demand webinars and automated webinars. So when you're doing it and it might be sort of a hybrid where some is recorded, some is live, or it's completely on-demand, how do you make those engaging? Oh, I love this. So on demand and automated are by far the biggest tip that I give to small marketing teams. For one, those small marketing teams of like one or two who are like, ah, oh, webinars are so scary. Yeah. I, I, I don't have the resources to do a live webinar all the time. Great news. You don't have to put together an automated webinar, throw it on your website, literally generate leads while you're sleeping. There are still a lot of opportunities to make that engaging. So obviously you still have some of the chat functionality. You can still receive those chat messages as people are watching your on-demand videos. You can reply to those. People love to do these hybrid events where they're technically live events, Mm -hmm. but they're showing the content of the live event is a pre-recorded video. That happens a lot more often than people realize. (laughs) A lot more often. And I think, you know, what Demio does really well is you're able to actually upload your video so that you don't have to deal with screen sharing and you don't have to deal with streaming quality. You can actually upload it live into the platform. So it's really seamless. This really benefits those users who are a little nervous on camera maybe, or get a little scared about presenting you know, material in real time, but they come on live, they press the start button, they play the video, and then they manage the chat. They continue to use those four options that I mentioned, chat, handouts, featured actions. You can still do all of that while your pre-recorded content is playing. So there's still Mm -hmm. incredible opportunities to really drive a sense of relationship building without feeling like you have to sacrifice your own confidence to do it. Yeah. Like my background is as a one person marketing department. So everything I do is about systemizing, streamlining, automating. So this is exactly up my alley. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's sort of this, this weird hidden secret that I, that not enough people are taking advantage of. We hear a lot from customers who are saying, especially now, you know, I'm, I'm just tired. Like I can't do Webinars are producing great results for us, but I don't have the bandwidth to do five live webinars a month. And I'm like, wait, stop doing five live webinars a month, especially your evergreen content. Your best content that is going to live forever should be on demand and it should be living on your website Mm -hmm. until it's no longer relevant. Yeah, it's dated. You'll continue to get those leads. (laughs) Continue to get those leads. And again, about extending the value Even when you do a live webinar, you run a beautiful live webinar. It was incredible. You were on point. You looked great. Everything was working right. And then it's over. And you should be taking the recording of that video and turning it into an on-demand video. Extend the value. This is the other thing I see a lot of marketers struggling with is they spend so much time planning and organizing and getting great guests, doing promo for their webinar. And then it's over and it's like, woof, we're done. Yes. And and then they don't use it. (laughs) Take that webinar video and turn it into social media videos, turn Mm -hmm. it into a nurture campaign, turn it into a blog post, turn it into an ebook. I mean, the options go on and on. And then your your hard work doesn't go to waste. You know, it, it wasn't just 60 minutes and done. It really extends the life of your content that you worked so hard to put together. Yeah, I can't think of any type of content that it doesn't make sense to repurpose it for other elements, other media types. Totally, yeah, totally agree. So before we wrap up, well, before we talk about the upcoming webinar, I want to ask you to explain to the audience, what is the difference between on-demand and an automated webinar? 
Yeah, great question. So both use pre-recorded content. So you upload a pre-recorded video for uh, an automated event or an on-demand event. The benefit of an on-demand event, the way an on-demand event works is someone goes in to register, they fill out the little form, and immediately they can access that. They can immediately be brought right into the room and see it in real time. Now, the reason this is powerful is because think about the journey your registrant goes through, right? Maybe they see a promotion on social media. Maybe they check out your website. They start to kind of read the description of your webinar and they're like, oh my gosh, I am so excited for this. I am all in. They go in and they register and they're all hyped up. And in the moment that they are most excited, they can access your content, right? You're literally grabbing them when they are most engaged and ready for you. Automated events are scheduled events, just like live events are, but they're still using that pre-recorded content. So the difference here is that just like in a live event, an automated event, you have to wait for whatever that date and time is. It looks like it's live. Right, right, right. <laughs> and you ha- your registrant has to wait until you know that date and time that you've scheduled it. It's still a scheduled time. Mm-hmm. So couple of differences there, but the main leverage point is if you get nervous being in front of a camera, or if you're a small team and you just don't have the bandwidth to do live all the time, pre-record your content. You can pre-record a talking head video like me. Boop, boop. You can pre-record yourself just moving through slides at all in any of the above and just upload it and then go. It's basically mm-hmm. done for you. Yeah. And you can do that whether it's a live webinar, automated or on demand. You can always pre-record if you're not comfortable. Like we're live streaming right now. I could mess up something right now and it's for the internet to see. Everyone will see it. (laughs) And that's the life I live. (laughs) Same. Me too. Me too. I'm getting used to doing a lot of live webinars. The weirder things have happened. I mean, I was just saying my dog who sleeps all day always pipes up right when I'm about to like present something as if she's just like, ready. yeah, she's like, oh, you need me to be quiet now. I'm just going to like chill here and decide to bark when I feel like it. It always happens. That's totally normal behavior. So you have an upcoming webinar for Demio that I am really excited about. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we're running a webinar on how to run interactive webinars. Now, the best part about Demio webinars, just in general, Mm -hmm. is that they are meta experiences, right? Like we're going to run an interactive webinar for you that shows you what an interactive webinar is. Yeah, so you're We're using not, all of the points that you're going to talk about. <laughs> totally. We're not just going to like teach at you, you know? I, I, a lot of times I feel like marketing is just like distilling your information like <laughs> upon your audience. Like, you know, <laughs> you're welcome. No, we're actually going to like envelop you as part of this experience because we know how important your attendees experience is for you as a marketer. You care about, are my attendees going to have a hard time joining the webinar? Are my attendees going to have to download an application? Are my attendees going to be able to join on mobile? Like these are the things you really care about. How's my branding going to look, right? So come experience it in real time and see exactly how we run interactive webinars and exactly all of those tools and tips and tricks, see them in real time happening. And can I give a link to let people go register for that? Awesome. So Um, why don't you put it in the comments and then it'll shoot out to the world. Oh, I love that. Okay, cool. So this webinar is happening on June 3rd, and it's actually called Driving Revenue with Interactive Webinar Experiences. So we're going to be talking specifically about how engagement and interactive webinar experiences drive the bottom line. So the point here isn't just to have happy prospects, right? Engaged, interactive prospects. But Mm -hmm. the idea is that engaged, interactive, happy prospects lead to more sales, right? Lead to a better brand relationship, lead to better trust building between yourself and your prospects. And eventually when they're ready to buy, they will. So we're going to talk about all of that on June 3rd. That is going to be awesome. I'll also put this in our show notes for the landing page. And um, thank you so much for joining me today. (laughs) You're welcome. Thanks for having me. This was so much fun. I love it. It was. All right. I'll talk to you soon. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. 
If you liked that, you might like this even better. This podcast is also available as a video, so you can find that on YouTube or my website. The same show notes page that you can find all of the details about this episode also has the video embedded in there, so you can see us chitty chatting live. And I just wanted to give you some action steps before you walk away from this podcast. So remember to make your webinars a little more engaging. Keep your chat as your home base. You do not want to be the lecturer sitting at a podium and blah, blah, blah to your audience. Instead, create an inviting and engaging atmosphere by having a lot of your webinar in the chat and encouraging conversation to happen. And don't forget to give plenty of handouts and actionable ways that your attendees can use what you're teaching and take it one step further. There's a whole lot more that you learned from this podcast, but those are two really great takeaways that I think that you should take to your next webinar. Now, I don't want to leave me without me reminding you to sign up for my weekly newsletter. It's sarahnoelblock.com slash newsletter. You can also find it in the show notes. And every single Tuesday, you'll find our latest content. And it's all about content marketing, email, and social media, all through the lens of operations systemized, efficient operations. So don't forget, sign up for that newsletter and I love you. Thank you for joining me. You're the best. Hello, and thank you for joining Tiny Marketing. I help tiny marketing departments create consistent content that builds trust with their audience. Book done for you content marketing at sarahnoelblock.com. Don't forget to follow, rate, and review the podcast on your favorite podcast app. See you next time, friends.